Hey, welcome back to another video. This video is going to be on uh, implementing basic file upload on your Laravel application. Uh, in this video, I have a basic Laravel application set up just to demo this. And basically what I did is just create a new Laravel application, install Laravel Breeze, which I have a video on. I think it's called Laravel Authentication. Um, it's on my channel. You'll find it's one of the recent ones. And then I just changed the dashboard page to be a profile page and added this form. So that's just the get you up to speed on what happened here. That's what that's what this is. It's just a simple application. It has a couple tables and you can see here I have one user. So uh, inside the app, I have two routes that we need. So I have a get profile, which you're seeing on the page here, and I have a put profile update route. So this will actually take the update and this goes to the update method inside the profile controller that I created. And in here, I just have the basic name, email, and password set up. That this is just basic update stuff outside of the file upload. And I can show you that it actually works by changing my name. So you can see in the corner here, I'm now David instead of David G, and it's updated in the database. So if you want to up, uh, if you want to implement some file upload in your Laravel app, uh, a couple things you need to know is uh, there's a bunch of storage drivers or disks you can use. Uh, you need to, if you want to use a local one, you're probably going to have to link your storage. So I would just do this even if you're not implementing this kind of storage anyways, because uh, you're going to probably run into it sooner or later. So I do PHP artisan storage link. I probably already have this set up, but yep, mine already exists. But if you run that for the first time, it'll create the link for you. Uh, and in a blade file, the way to create file upload is just to use a file upload input type. And that's probably the first thing we're going to implement here um, just to get something on the page and get started. So first thing we're going to do is just go into our profile, profile, uh, blade file. And you can see I have the name, email, password, and password confirmation inputs. The file upload one is going to be styled similarly. So I'm just going to copy the password confirmation and use that as a starting, like, starting spot. Uh, I'm going to change password confirmation IDs and names to avatar. Uh, I'm not actually sure if people still call them avatars, but that's what I'll call it. And you're also going to want to change the input type to file. And I'm rushing through this part because this is not really a tailwind tutorial for sty styling stuff. But if you want to see this code, there will be a GitHub link below in the description. So if I go here now, I should be able to see an upload and it looks it actually looks fine, so I won't change it. And if I click here, it should open a file selector box, right? So I have one image, which is Dwight Schrute from the office. And if I click this, it should show Dwight.jpg. And if I go into the controller that accepts these requests and die and dump the request file avatar, oops. and I click save profile, we should get an illuminate HTTP uploaded file, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. And you can see it's dwight.jpg. So we have the image coming through and we know that it's in the controller. What we wanna do is actually validate it. So avatar, and not everyone's gonna to wanna to update an avatar and new users won't have avatars. So this is gonna to have to be nullable. And we want to declare which MIME types are acceptable. So this would be the um, like the extension of the file or the file type. So it would be like JPEG, JPG, PNG. And the way we do this is just by using MIMES, uh, J, JPG, oops, JPG, JPEG, PNG, and GIF or GIF, depending how you pronounce it. And we also want to set a max size. I typically do 2048 because it seems... Uh, like two megabytes should be enough for a profile image. That might actually be too much, but um, that's what I'm going to use. And so now we know that this validation should pass. So we could try that. If we get D, if we get a die and dump of one on the screen, that means it has. There we go. And so we know that our, our image is validated. It works. It's fine. Um, you might want to actually also validate the dimensions. So um, you need to find a way to if your profile image is um, going to be used in like a circle, you might want to make sure that the, 
the dimensions make it a square or pretty close to a square. And so I think there are validation methods for that built into Laravel that you can use. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. Um, and you can use those to validate that they're within a certain range, I believe. And if not, there's definitely third-party packages for that. So next we wanna actually save the file and create an avatar path. I like to just declare avatar path is equal to null at the beginning and do if um, request has file avatar. So we're checking if the file is within the request. We want to check because when we start doing the saving stuff, I don't want to run into a situation where we're trying to save null and uh, an error will pop up. Uh, if I was doing this for a production app, I'd probably wrap this in like a try catch and see what breaks where, figure out how, how it breaks. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, it's pretty simple. We're just going to do this and we're going to set avatar path equal to request file avatar store, which is a method used to store obviously uh, the files that are uploaded. And we want to store it in a directory called avatars. So this will be avatars slash image name and public. So the interesting thing about the public part here, which may be confusing is the store method accepts options and the default is an empty array. But when those options are parsed and it figures out that the options are actually a string, it will use that option string that's passed in as the disk that you want to use. I just want the image to be public and we'll be using the disk that is declared or your disks are listed in the file systems config. So we'll be using the public one. So it'll figure out that we want to use the public disk from this config here and it will store it publicly. So that's what I'm going to use here. And also one of the things I don't like about just the regular storage uh, methods that Laravel provides, we use an outside package at work, which I'll make a video about later on. We've scaled that to thousands of users and multiple types of uploads. So that's going to be my next video. Uh, but if I was using this to store different kinds of images, I would probably refactor this into a constant on the user model. And I would also store with a custom name. So assuming your user IDs are not sensitive and you don't mind them being part of the image name, uh, you could do auth ID and then join that with dot and then join that with request file avatar get client original extension. So our file is .jpg or, or .jpg, I don't remember. And this method will actually get that and append it to the user ID. If we look in the database here, I'm user ID two. And so it'll be two .jpg. Um, now we have, we can check that this actually works first. So let me just go upload an image. So we have avatars slash two dot JPEG. I believe if I go into storage, avatars, you can see two and that's Dwight there. So it has stored and it's stored with my user ID and these are the previous uploads. Um, and we have this, the image, the avatar path works. The last kind of piece we need uh, on the update side is to actually store that on the user model. Uh, to do that, we'll have to just generate a pretty simple migration. So PHP artisan make migration, add avatar path. I'll call, I'll call the column av avatar path to users table. And in this file here, I'm going to open it in VS code. We can just do table string avatar path and we want it to be nullable because new users won't have an avatar and maybe users that are registered won't want one you know and then down here we'll want to drop the column in case we want to um, reverse the migration column avatar path so that looks good um so we add a string column named avatar path that's nullable to the to the table and then we drop it in the case that we want to reverse it. 
And so we can run this PHP artisan migrate. If we look at our table now, we have an avatar path column. And my initial reaction is just to do avatar path, avatar path, but this actually won't work. And it's because the default user model that ships with Laravel or Breeze um, has a fillable here. And you can see I've added it from a, I've added avatar path as a fillable from a previous attempt, but typically it looks like this. And so if we went to save this or update, it wouldn't actually add the value to the table. It would reject it uh, silently. So you're gonna wanna go into your user model and make sure that fillable contains avatar path. And so if I go into the browser now and go back, choose an image, Dwight, save. We should now have number two dot JPEG inside the um, database on, for that user. Now keep in mind, I'm realizing now that if you use this ID for the images, um, it will overwrite probably whatever's already stored. So keep that in mind. Maybe you wanna add like a timestamp to it, but I just wanted to highlight the fact that you can use a custom name when saving these images. Um, now the last piece of the puzzle is probably to do the UI part here where we show the avatar just to make sure that it actually works. So um, when I was in initially working on this, I tried to find where that is and I just got lucky by searching uh, auth user arrow name. And that brought up the navigation.blade.php. This is obviously going to depend on your project. And I know that this button here, which is what you click to log out, is styled with flex. So I know that these things are gonna line up probably centered already. We're using item centered, so at least uh, vertically they're gonna be centered. So if I just add an image here, we can make it multi-line because it's gonna be bigger. Uh, and actually we need to wrap it with an if. So we wanna make sure that auth user avatar path. So if that avatar path exists, we want to do source equal And in here, we want to use the asset helper. And we just put auth user avatar path. And this should actually show up. It does, there's Dwight. <laughs> um, and we can style this, but one of, the, one of the best practices to add an alternative, I think it's called alternative text uh, to your image in case it doesn't load. So um, we're going to use auth user name and then append this so do um, so names avatar and that should work so we could actually check that inside of inspect yep david's avatar and we want to style it so it looks reasonable so this won't be a tutorial on tailwind but like i said before the link will be in the description below and you could check out how this works. But basically, I just want to do rounded full to make it a circle, give it a width of eight and a height of eight. Um, whoops. Uh, so let's do that. Oops. Oh, there's no need for curly braces. <laughs> it's just classes, CSS classes. So we have Dwight there in a circle, but you need some space between the name and the image. So let's do a margin right of three. And there. Perfect. So um, now if I go and remove this image and just make this null again, and delete this, there should be no image there. If I go and upload Dwight again, there's Dwight. So this is how you basically implement a, a simple file upload in Laravel. There are kind of some pitfalls that I mentioned. You're going to want to maybe do like a timestamp appended to the image name uh, to make sure that you're not overwriting previous ones. Uh, and also you want to do like a try catch in case it fails potentially. Uh, at work, like I mentioned, my next video will be about our, our system that we use at work to implement file uploads. And we do file uploads for all kinds of documents in multiple pages. Um, and it works really, really well. And it stores way better than this. 
So stay tuned for that video. Please subscribe if you found this helpful. Um, and I will see you in the next video.